Stephanie Milkey here, a.k.a. Keto Mom, or often called mom, sis, Steffi, daughter, wife, aunt, and friend. Just like many of you, I carry a lot of titles. My favorite title is mom. I should probably say wife, which takes a lot of my time. But let's be honest. If you want to do something and do it well, you will make the time for it. Commitment is hard because we find ourselves overcommitted. But when you practice prioritizing, you will find out what is actually important and what you can let go. With the Keto Mom Podcast, you will learn together how to manage our time, commit to the most important things in life, and I will equip you with the tools you need to feel qualified each step of the way. My name is Stephanie Milkey, and welcome to the Keto Mom Secrets Podcast. Good morning, good morning. Welcome to the Keto Mom page. My name is Stephanie. If I have not met you, I would love for you to post new below so that I can meet you and help you on your goals if that's something that you want help with. As you're tuning in, let me know where you're tuning in from. Uh, it is cold today. So we live in Minnesota. The wind is like, it is windy, and I think we're going to get an ice storm. And I will tell you, I woke up this morning, and I'm like, I need socks, and I need all of, I might go put like an actual winter hat on, even just walking around my home. My girls will walk around, and they'll say like, I'm cold, and I'm like, you need a sweatshirt, you need socks on, put a hat on, and it, and we have the heat on. It's a chilly day. So as you're tuning in, where are you tuning in from? And we are talking about dream, <coughs> excuse me, we're still going through Dream It, Pin It, Live It. So it's a book that is going to help you create goals, like smart goals, a vision board, really help you get set up for next year so that you don't get to which, by the way, isn't very far away, but really helps you go, all right, what do I want? Uh, what are some things I'm going to focus on? And you don't have to wait until January or be like most people when they just start thinking about it. And then all of a sudden it's February and you haven't done anything. So we're diving in, back into this book. Whether you just tune in, I hope that you hear something and that you can take action on it. I hope that all of you sit down at some sit down at some point in time and think like what does our family want? Where are we going? What are some things that we can truly focus on? And I said this phrase yesterday and I'm going to say it again. I listened to a message by Pastor Josh Kraft. His dad, well he's he's his dad is Pastor Keith Kraft. They have a church in Frisco, Texas, but the son spoke this last week. And he said, you get what you expect. I would love to know what you think about that phrase. You get what you expect. So when you woke up this morning, did you expect to have a good day? Did you expect to feel well? I'm not saying like, well, I expect that somebody's going to give me $10,000. But in general... What you expect on things like going to work, going to school, maybe how you're going to feel at the gym, those things are going to determine how you look at life, your perspective. What are you expecting? It's a question for you. I have been thinking about that a lot as I get up in the morning and yesterday I was like, <clears throat> I was in my mind going to say something about working out and then I was like, I'm not going to expect that. I don't want that. I'm going to expect that my workout is going to be great. So in this book that we are going through, we have talked about setting SMART goals. We have talked about writing them down. I've asked you things like, what do you want for next year? Do you choose a word for the year? I'm going to give you an idea that I feel like uh, we've done for years uh, I slacked a little bit this year, but I'm like, I've got to get better. So I have to put it in a different place in my home. But as you are creating goals and as you're creating vision boards, I hope that you're doing the actions. The biggest thing I tell people is, isn't it interesting how something great can happen to you? And then the next day, you can forget about it, right? Because you keep moving on with your day. And so as you're doing these things, I'm going to give you one more idea that can help you throughout your entire year next year. And we call it a remember wall. I don't actually remember who told me about this or if I read it somewhere, but um, so very soon I will get a big kind of big long piece of paper, a poster board, 
and I'm going to tape it or hang it on the back of one of our doors. The door is always shut. And I'll write uh, 2023 Remember Wall, and then I'll write January. And for the whole month of January, if there's anything that we're like, oh my goodness, we don't want to forget this. Somebody blessed us with this. We saw this miracle happen. Uh, we were able to accomplish this goal. Anything that you're like, oh my goodness, that is so awesome. We're going to just write a sentence, you know, under the January section. And then in February, I'll write February and we'll fill in February. It, you guys, I'll show you how simple it is. It's just a piece of paper, marker, and then we just write things down. The reason I say that is because if you have a day where you're like, nothing great is happening for me, I reject that. That's not true for me. Uh, or if you're like, your mindset is spiraling out of control. If you had a really great day yesterday, but today has already started as one of those days. I want you to, you can always go back and look at your remember wall to encourage you to go, it has been a great year. Or look at the things we have been blessed with. Look at the things that we have accomplished. So that it just, so you don't have to wallow in a moment and feel like it's on always, right? You don't wallow in that moment. You can go, look at all of the great things that we have done, have been blessed with. You know what? This moment won't last forever and I need to choose my attitude, which I did say on here, I labeled it, um, you choose your attitude every day. You are awake. You have been blessed with another day. Congratulations, right? I hope that you've walked through your morning with an attitude of gratitude and you make choices every day. And those choices, I mean, those create your future. So do you choose to eat well or make an excuse? Do you choose to go to the gym or make an excuse? Are you going to choose to have a positive attitude and encourage those around you or be a whiner all day? It's your choice. All right. That had nothing to do with this except for it just came out. All right. I wish I could recap everything in the book for you. You've been following along. Great. If you have not been following along, well, maybe you'll hear something that's going to help you today. So after you have already written out your goals, after you start creating your vision board, something that the author says is this. She goes, I need you to, as you are working towards your goals, I want you to, there's a couple of habits that she's talking about. I'm only going to go over habit one today. And it's focusing on listening. So as you have your vision boards created and you're sitting there going, all right, I've created it. I've written my goals down. What do I do? And I think this is super powerful because I do it. I was coaching my team last night on this. I said, the first habit to adapt into your new routine is the habit of listening. And you might be going, what? And you're doing it right now. Uh, it's listening to motiv motivational teachers. It's listening to people that inspire you. This very well could be the missing ingredient that you need to see your dreams come true. And it's what are you watching and what are you listening to? So she gives some incredible examples where I was like, oh my goodness. So listen to this. It might shock you. Maybe it won't shock you. But she said, studies have shown that the average American watches more than five hours of television every single day. We work from home. We homeschool and our TV is never on. It's on uh, maybe when I'm cooking supper. But like we do things. We listen to books. We listen to good music. Uh, what is So that means that by the time you are 60 years old, you have wasted 15 years of your life glued to a box. What? That's crazy. The average American is watching television show and the average American is watching television shows that have no interest. They have no interest in the average person sleeps 30 minutes late, too late every day. The average person 18 to 34 spends nearly four hours a day on social media. She goes, if you're, if you're desperate for change, you're going to have to be desperate to make the changes. So you could look at any area of your life, whether it's, I need more time. Where are you spending your time? I want to feel or look healthier. What are you eating? Are you going to the gym? Like if you want change, you're going to have to make a change and you need to have the awareness of where are you spending your time and the things you might be like, oh, I don't do that. I would challenge you to actually look at your entire day and go, huh? All right. I can use this time 
for something else. And as you're going through this book, she said, okay, we have our vision boards up. We have our goals set. Now we're working on self-development. I want you to read. I want you to listen to people. I want you to surround yourself with great people, whether it's in person or online to learn from them. So she says, there are two different types of people. She goes, they there's a study, they studied the wealthy and they studied the poor. The well, so they gave six different, six different sentences. They wake up three hours before they go to work. The well, there's 44% wealthy, 3% poor. Listen to audiobooks on the way to their commute. We like to say drive time university. Are you listening to garbage? Are you listening to the news? Are you, is it already putting you in a negative mindset? Or are you listening to something that's going to inspire you as you're on your way to work or even taking your kids to school? 63% of the wealthy say yes. Uh, it's 5% of the poor. Reading 30 minutes a day. 88% of the wealthy, 2% of the poor. It's interesting. Listen to this. Oh, actually, hold on. I told this to somebody the other day, and we actually talked about this this last weekend. Mm, I'll have to find it. It was like a crazy number of how many people after high school never open a book ever again. I don't know where it went, but we'll find it. Exercise at least four days a week. 76% are wealthy, 23% are poor. Watch reality TV. 7% wealthy people, 78% poor. I don't know what they consider wealthy and poor, but I'm just giving you a concept of if you're looking at people and she's like, you, you look at and you watch people. And if you're like, I want what they have, or I want to do what they do, then you follow what they do. So this is just giving you an idea of their habits, right? Believe good habits create opportunities. 8% of the wealthy, 4% of poor. You get the idea. The bottom line is a successful people have adapted successful habits. That's what we're talking about. And one of the habits she said that's super important is listening. Who are you listening to? What are you watching? Even down to the music that you're listening to. If you want to be successful, study successful people. If you want to be rich, study rich people. If you want to be skinny, study skinny people. And so that was just the very first habit. Develop your own plan for personal growth by starting with a routine of listening. Experts suggest that you must listen to something 16 times before it finally takes root. I say that on here often, right? You have to hear something 15, 16, 17 times before you're like, I actually can do that, right? All right. Um, we'll go into the next ones the next day. So I just wanted to give you that awareness. Who are you listening to? What are you watching? How much time are you spending on TV? Do you actually want to make a change? If you do, it's going to require change. So I hope that you have been doing the activities, writing down your goals, making them smart goals, start creating vision boards, and just take the awareness today of what you're listening to, where you're wasting time, and we can switch that and replace it with good healthy habits, with listening to people that will inspire you, reading good books, uh, actually working on the dreams that you have and not wasting your time. So there you go. I will be back on later to give you some keto tips. If you're ever looking for recipes, you can head to ketomomsecrets.com. You can click on recipes. You can click on how to get started. Uh, as always, I have mom fuel. We've got fun different trials available. Uh, whatever you're looking for, reach out. I hope you guys have an incredible day and we'll talk to you soon.